Hello, welcome to the Monday, May 17th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Last week, I mentioned how Jan was looking at the slight decrease in exposed industrial control systems over the last year. Xavier this weekend followed up with a quick look at exposed VNC services. Now, when Jan looked at the data using Shodan, Jan focused on ports that are specific to industrial control protocols. VNC, of course, is a more generic remote access protocol, but often used to expose industrial control systems as well. Xavier used a tool called VNC Snapshot, uh, which uh, takes, well, as the name implies, sort of a screenshot of a VNC service. It does not attempt to log in, so there was no brute forcing involved in any way. Well, and he didn't have to look long in order uh, to figure out that many of the services that were exposed did not require any kind of authentication and appeared to allow direct access to a number of industrial control systems worldwide. No big news here, sad that it's really still happening. And uh, yes, Xavier uh, showed some screenshots here showing that this is a worldwide problem, not really just a regional or limited to particular industry problem. A lot of developers these days are using Visual Studio Code in order to edit their projects in part because Visual Studio Code is available on multiple platforms. It's free, it's supported by Microsoft, and it does provide a number of plugins for specific languages. For example, a Rust Analyzer plugin that according to the Visual Studio Marketplace uh, site has been in installed about 200,000 times. The problem with this plugin is that if a developer does open a malicious project, this may execute code and a proof of concept exploit has already been released. In the proof of concept exploit, uh, this vulnerability is used to exfiltrate the .ssh directory from the developer's account. So this could potentially include, for example, private SSH keys and, of course, SSH configuration files that may give an attacker access uh, to various systems that the developer has access to. We often think of editors as more or less sort of a fairly harmless piece of software that will just make a code or text look pretty. But many of these editors, in particular if they're used for development, do provide these plugins that actually do execute code or at least do some more complex analysis on code that then, of course, could get exploited. In this particular case, the only thing the victim has to do is open the file so there is no building of a project or anything like this involved uh, to trigger the vulnerability. And I think it was last week that Qualys released their 21 Nails Advisory which uh, outlined 21 different vulnerabilities in XM and I mentioned that we'll probably soon see some exploits. Well, and we have at least one proof of concept that was now released outlining some of the techniques that can be used to take advantage of these vulnerabilities. Now, this is not a remote code execution vulnerability that's being exploited by this particular uh, exploit, but uh, instead it's more uh, arbitrary read and information leak vulnerability that still uh, could be quite dangerous in particular if it's then being used in order to, for example, bypass ASLR and uh, then take another vulnerability to achieve uh, remote code execution. So just as a reminder, if you are running XM, it's critical that you're patching your install this week. And Malwarebytes Lab has been pretty good in the past uh, tracking the activities of MageCard, which is the group that typically injects JavaScript into websites in order uh, to exfiltrate 
credit card data as users are typing it into various forms. The latest activity that uh, Malwarebytes does thus attribute to MageCard Group 12 does use actually a PHP web shell that's then disguised as a fav icon. The trick isn't really new, has been done before, but a good reminder to double check your files, including these little icon files that are often overlooked and ignored if they change. They have also been used to exfiltrate data in the past and also as repositories for malicious JavaScript. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.